Hi, good morning. Welcome to London City Angler. And what a morning it is. Isn't that sunrise the best thing you've ever seen in your life? That's what makes it worth getting up at four o'clock in the morning to get down here before light just to witness that. Um, all right, so we're back at the Estate Lake again. And after last week's success with the, with the small pike I had on the bottom lake, um, I'm going to give it a go on the top lake today. Um, top lake has got less fish in it but they tend to be of a bigger stamp generally so fingers crossed it's gonna if I do get one it's gonna be a better fish uh, what else I'm gonna do I've got a couple of different things I'm gonna do today um, I've got a big pike ground bait with me um, I'm gonna mix that up and I'm gonna basically take it like I would do if I was carp fishing I'm gonna go around bait a few swims put a bit out here a bit about there um, so when I'm doing my rotor later on um, there's something there already. I'm not gonna put much out. Little handful here, little handful there, but it's better than nothing. So that's something I'm gonna give a go. Also, I've got some uh, new baits to try. Um, on my way to Lewisham, I stopped in at one of the little Indian wholesalers, and he actually had um, bags of anchovies and bags of something called a, a yellow yellow tilapia. Um, and they, were, they looked about perfect size. I weren't sure if they're going to be any good or not. But um, they're about yay big. And got home, did a bit of research on them. They're actually part of the mackerel family. Um, so when I've defrosted them, they, they actually stink. They smell like mackerel. Uh, nice, tough skin to them. I've stuck one on at the moment. And it, it casts well. Big oil stick as it went in. So yeah, they look like they've got a good chance of uh, doing the business, really. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let, let's just enjoy this for the last half hour or so when it's there and then um, I'll show you through some of the mixes that I've got. Alright so um, I was mistaken before um, they're not called Tilapia they're Trevelli um, Yellowtail Trevelli um, they're part of the mackerel family um, and they look like so like that. About five inches long, um, strong mackerel -y smell to them. Uh, I've got one on at the moment, cut it open. The flesh is very similar to mackerel, but it's got a tough backbone in it and a very tough skin around the bottom section, which makes it brilliant for casting, actually. Um, like I say, I've got, that's, that's about a third of the bag there. It's £2.50 for bloody loads of them. And then the other thing that I've got, are these little bad boys which are anchovies that little uh, headless anchovies if anyone's tasted anchovies before you know how much they stink um, yeah really salty really oily uh, great great bait they're a little bit too small a little bit too small to be fished on their own but for the for the chum that I'm going to make up they're going to be perfect for that uh, so the the foundation of the the chum mix is going to be vitalin. Um, you could use anything that's just going to hold the, the oils really, and oils and the bits of fish together. It doesn't have to be vitalin. You could do some old ground bait, uh, breadcrumb. But this is what I had in the bottom of the, the bucket at home. So that's going in. I've got some bits of old fish, some old bluey, some old sardines. Um, never chuck anything away uh, at the end of the session just keep it back to one side then you can use it for for pre-bait and some old frozen dead maggots what's that oh yeah this is uh, squid oil for sea fishing it's disgusting uh, so I'm gonna put some of that in it and so yeah and that's it I'm not gonna mix up bundles of it I'm not gonna put in loads but I'm gonna give it a go see if it works what it how's it going no it's been quiet mate oh, I've got them all over the place where are you gonna go I'm being greedy and I'm got one in the middle by the island uh, where are you gonna fish from this side or this no, from here no I'm kind of going just to the left, right there, and just you can see where my float is, but I'll bring that bar oh, yeah. back. No, that's alright, I'll go down the other side. No, uh, I can't have the old lake to myself, can I? 
<laughs> right, so there's there's the fitting in the bucket. Like I say, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mix up bundles. Normally when I mix up loads I end up just chucking it at the end of the day anyway. Um, I can always nip, knock up some more. So we've got a couple of fish heads in there. Morning. Yeah, a bit of sardine. A bit of bluey. I'm cutting them up quite small, really. Just um, you don't want anything too big to to fill them up it's little tiny pieces just to get them to get their interest I've got no doubt they'll, they'll be rooting around at the bottom to pick these little piece, bits and pieces up Last but not least, on the fish front, a couple of the old bad boy anchovies. Me fish bits in. Good sprinkling of the old magitos. Little dash of the oil. Little bit of lake water. Like I say, I've got that all mixed together now. Um, basically, if I was going to be firing this out with a catapult, I'd want to add more ground bait in there to make it into be able to make it into balls. So obviously, I could throw it out. So if I tried to put that in a catapult, it won't go very far. Um, and it's just going to go everywhere, basically, which is no good. Um, so what I've got. Well, the idea is that basically I don't want to put it in as balls. I want to put it in as loose particles, which flutter down and kind of some will hang mid-water, some will sink to the bottom, some some will be floating. So it'll be going all the way through the water column. Um, so the way I'm going to get it out is with a little mini spawn. Uh, it seemed like the obvious answer to me to of what to do. Basically, I can, I'm going to set this up on my spinning rod. Um, because it's only tiny, there's, there's, there's going to be no weight to that. Um, and then go around a few little bosh bosh boshes, um, get a bit of grub out there, get the pike hunting, and then um, hopefully I'm going to be able to catch them. That's the plan, anyway. All right, so let's do a little test in the edge to see how, um, how it reacts when it hits the water. Yeah, boy, look at that. You've got bits and pieces all over the place. You've got some sunk straight to the bottom. Some maggots floating, some bits of the vitalin floating. You can see the oil coming straight off of it. And there's a lovely little cloud there now. So I think that's going to be about perfect consistency. I think it's helped as well, um, not wetting, wetting the vitalin too much. So it's still got, still got a bit, of, still a bit dry, and got a bit of buoyancy to it. All right, let's get some out into the main lake now. Oh, 
Alright, so I've got the bag of Monda, Monda the little tiny spawn on the, the spinning rod and we're going to go back and get a bait out now and you should be able to see um, the slick that this, this bait causes on the, the wind line basically that whole area the whole area to the left should should slick off in theory so let's see if this works I've got to say this stuff is, is vile. But it's made a lovely slick and a lovely cloud in the water. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? The things we go for for catching fish. Alright, let's get the float out again. And what I'm doing is I'm just letting it sit out there. I've got it set I've got it set just over depth so the the fish will sit down onto the bottom. So then when I give it a twitch, it will lift up like I showed you in the other video, the line will pull through the float lift the fish off the bottom along and then it all the little sink will make it sink down and sit on the bottom and I'm not I'm not twitching it all the time every sort of every sort of five minutes ten minutes I move it like a, a few feet five ten minutes a few feet just um, just if there so if there's anything around the area it'll um, it might trigger it into taking where it's just been sitting there watching and not really not really made up its mind yet so that's the plan anyway
bait still smells good. Let's nip round and do the, do the other spot quickly. Right here should do it. Right, so the problem is, I've just realised, is that someone else could turn up and want to fish this swim. Whereas I've, kind of, I've sat down on the corner, um, which gives me access to both bits of water.
Well, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I might have to move. Right, let's get back to the rods anyway, I'm gonna make my mind up. All right, so it looks like this, um, this top lake's a lot more weedy than the bottom one. The bottom one had some like stringy, very fine, black stuff that was coming back but I don't really see that as a problem whereas this is like thick really ropey type of weed that I can imagine is coming up at the bottom so I think I'm going to have to change over to the popped up baits um, if you've seen the, the last video I did I was having problems inserting uh, the bolsa sticks inside the inside the fish without completely uh, disintegrating them basically so I came up with this idea um, I've got all of some poly balls yeah but um, I didn't want to put like a whole big brown I ain't got a clue what that was yeah I didn't want to put a big hole uh, round poly ball on the end of it I wanted to try and make it look a bit more a bit more streamlined a bit more uh, a bit more natural so what I've done is I've cut the poly ball in half and then trimmed the sides off again so I've ended up like that and that looks quite nice it's it's uh, still got enough buoyancy to pop it up uh, straight off the lead but I suppose what you could do if you're going to be really critical about it is you could trim that trim that poly ball right down so it just sinks slowly and sits on the, the bottom like the same way you do a critical critically balanced boilie and it won't look so blatant but um for the first experiment i'm going for blatant so that's going to go on uh, i'll show you how i've set that up in a minute because it's uh it's quite an ingenious way Well, first things first, let's get the rod back in the water. Alright, so let's show you how to um, set this up. Alright, first of all, you want to get your fish of whatever sort you're doing and um, remove the head. Remove the head, save that for your chum mix. Remove the two side fins. And now you've got a nice, nice flush section at the end of the end of the body to mount your poly ball. <coughs> so I'm completely new to this, so it's a bit of trial and error at the moment, but um, I'm gonna cut the sides off. Right, cut the sides off and then you should have a piece that will fit onto the top of the bait like so um, like I said before uh, you can get this down so you can have it completely popped up off the bottom or critically balanced so the last one was too much poly ball so this one I'm going to go for about half the amount somewhere safe all right so that's about half the amount and it's a slightly bigger fish so we shall see if that works or if I need to adjust it at all so yeah then get yourself a bit of lime uh, find yourself something to use as a, as a stop nice bit of twig somewhere there we go and tied a bit of twig to the end of your monofilament or bit of line dental floss I even thought about using an elastic band which might elastic band might be good because you might be able to just pull it straight the way through and not need a stop because when you can constrict it it goes thinner and when you let go it'll go fat and it'll hold it in place Right, so stop on. And first of all, pull that through 
the little section of poly ball. Like voila. Then get one of these long, um, like gated stick needles. Going from the back near the tail and kind of like follow the spine along. You should come out the middle. See how that's come out right next to the spine there. That's where that's where you want it very centralised. pull your line through so there you go now the poly ball's mounted like perfectly against the top of the fish it doesn't look too blatant I, I thought like a big round poly ball at the top it's just a bit of a, a bit of giveaway these fish here they've they do get a lot of pressure because of the location of the lake really it's quite it's quite an easy access lake um, so they've probably seen a lot of things before and also can't do any arm can it and if you can't do any arm why not do it Right, so then do Alright, so let's go give it's a little test in this little bad boy. Testing the margin to see how it sits. And that that's surprisingly still too buoyant. Alright, so, alright, so, surprisingly, that tiny bit of poly ball is still too buoyant and it's popping that up, which means I need like about half of that again. But I've just had another idea, which is I can get some of um, the lead from the lead core and wrap it around the base of the fish until it's um, until it's exactly balanced how I want it. That is it. Oh, okay, found some lead wire in the bag. Um, this is basically, this is the wire that you get inside the lead core for carp fishing. You could probably use soldering wire. Well, to tell the truth, you could probably shove little bits of lead inside the fish to do exactly the same thing. But today, this is what I've got with me, so this is what I can use. I remember I'm kind of making, well I am making this up as I go along because I'm not really done much, well hardly any pipe fishing at all. So how much do we reckon? Let's put the old thing on. You know I can do it neater than that. You always try and be as neat as tidy as possible because it's all about all about your presentation and probably 80 percent of the time it might not make a blind bit of difference but there's always going to be an occasion where that little bit of extra effort and that's all it is it's a bit of extra effort it's an extra couple of minutes to do things properly it might make all the difference here. And you never know, that might be the day where you get something really special. Alright, there we go. See? Lead loaded pop up. Let's give this a go. So, 
moment of truth. Ah, oh, it's still too point. Not by much though. What am I gonna do? Alright, trim some of the polyball off. It's absolutely amazing how much buoyancy that tiny bit of polystyrene has got. So how am I going to do this? Alright, so there's that. There's that. Round four. Ah, <laughs> perfect. All right. There is it. All right. Let's get the camera sorted. All right. So this is exactly what I want to happen. You can see that it's just sitting off the bottom. So that means the trebles will be free of um, any debris that could stop the pike inhaling it. And also it's a bit more visual, so um, yeah, the pike can see it a bit better. Let's get a side on shot. I've got to say I'm very pleased with that. Right, and you know what? Let's get the sun out my eyes. You know what? This is the bit I enjoy most about fishing. It's um, not really knowing how to solve a problem and having to play about, trying little bits and different things to um, to get over it, really. And that, that's that's what I enjoy most about about it. It's the the problem solving aspect of fishing. Once you know how to do something. It just becomes a bit a bit repetitive to tell the truth you're doing the same thing over and over again you're just going through the motions and um there's only so long you can do that for hello mate got company oh get away from that bait wait no out of it Alright, so this was the, well first of all I'm going I'm to stay here, I'm not going to move around the corner, I'm going to take the chance that, because it is a weekday, no one else is going to turn up and want to jump in there, but um, whether it's the right or wrong decision I don't know, but um, only time will tell. Um, yes, yeah, so this is the first one I put out with the completely popped up. bit of Trevelli on there um, and it's still covered in weed but I think the weed that was on the bait is so it's only happened when I've when I've reeled in um, also because the sun's getting up now um, there's gonna be better light light penetration in the water so I think having this popped up what's that foot and a half off the bottom is gonna be too blatant so I'm gonna swap that bait um, for the one that I made up on the camera a minute ago, the, the actual neutral buoyancy one, or critically balanced as the carp guys, well us carp guys would like to say, critically balanced one. So that will sit um, just off of the bottom like so, so still giving me protection against the weed, uh, but making it more obvious and accessible for the pipe. So that's the plan.
All right, so um, another advantage I've just realised about having that wire on there is that you can use it to actually keep the trace and the top hook in place. Whereas up until now, I've been using a cable tie on the top bit of the bait. Just because all the, the hooks are barbless, there's um, there's crayfish in there. Last time I was having problems with the crayfish pulling the bait off with the barbless hooks. Um, so I went to cable ties. Cable ties solved the problem, um, but the wire is going to do exactly the same thing and it's double tasking so that should sit like so on the bottom so there's a chance of that treble getting um getting caught up in a bit of weed but that top one's still going to be completely free and if anything does grab that that treble is going to be in perfect position to um to get a good hook hold if if something decides to pick it up All right, so yeah, I've, I've changed my mind now, and there's there's two reasons behind that. There's one, one there's a couple of other anglers turned up, and they're they're doing laps and looking for fish. I'm not sure whether they're carp fishing or they're pike fishing, but um, I'm pretty sure they're going to set up somewhere. And um, the other reason is that basically the whole of this side of the lake is now getting hit by that stupidly bright sun. So. All of that side, it just doesn't really feel like the one for a pike at the moment, especially a big one. Um, neither does down here really, but that sun, as it's as it's quite low in the sky at this time, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit that tree line and cast this side of the lake into shadow first. So by moving by moving down there um, and fishing up against the little island either side of it, um, I'm going to get the first bit of the first bit of low light and also can always move back can't I if I if I see some kind of action um haven't seen any action nothing at all not even not even a small jack bike hitting into anything so it's not really filling myself with confidence at the moment but um just stick it out stick it out keep trying keep on going keep moving around um that's the aim of the game isn't it all right let's get these rods in and uh on to the next spot Alright, so yeah, got the got the gear around here now. Um, it looks miles better to tell the truth. There's a lot more shade, big snags. Um, I've never been around this side of the lake before to tell the truth. Down here you've got a couple of big snag trees going in. It looks very shallow, but um, I think the whole lake's very shallow to tell the truth. Um, this bit's kind of unfishable. I have got the chest waders with me, but even so, I don't know if I'm willing to put one out there. See what happens. There's a couple of little um, coys lurking around. Somewhere, where's it gone? There he is, look. Come out of someone's pond. What's that? There's something behind him as well. A bit of bigger fish activity. All the little fish that were topping down that end of the lake this morning have stopped now, so I guess they've gone come down here to the cover. Um, they're, a bit, they're a bit of a target down there, really, with the light like this. So this is the options. Dunno, just dunno. It does look good though, doesn't it? Well, I can put the camera away, I'll get back to you as soon as I've got something of interest to show you. Alright, so I could have could have just seen my first pipe. And guess where he is, it's right where I've just moved from. Oh, that was a big... That was a big tail that just come out of the water. No, it's a freaking carp. Yeah, 
That is not a bad cart though. But today, not what I'm looking for. Look, there's like three or four of them out there now. Probably attracted by my pike chum, isn't they? As much as I want to have a go for it, I'm not going to get distracted today. And also, I know they're bloody difficult to catch in here, they'll probably just drive me mad. So I ain't really got the right gear with me to do it. So I still can't make my mind up what to do. All right, here's an idea. Here's an idea. All right, so if you're in this situation now and you're fishing for pike, um, I know you probably don't know the lake, so that's that's a bit irrelevant. But what what would your tactics be? Um, stick them in the comments below, and um, I'll see if any of you come up with some interesting ideas. Because I'm a bit stumped, really. I think what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put. Ducks. I'm going to put the ledger somewhere over there, like behind them two coys. There's some, there's some dying lily pads down there. It's kind of like it's a funnel between the deeper part of the lake and the shallower, snaggy bit. So if they are sitting up there and they do decide to come out, they're going to have to swim past it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish the rod from, I'm not going to fish it from down here, I'm going to fish it from over here. And what that will allow me to do, if I fish it from here, with the rod tip higher, we go from boom, to boom out there, that will give me space to fish my float rod from the right and left little swims, and like be able to chuck it along this, this whole margin here I think. I think that's the plan, really. Well, it's my only plan at the moment. <laughs> so much for the carp being spooky, look. The other day we cast a lead at them and they absolutely went ballistic and swam off. Just cast my pipe for him and he actually came closer to see what was going on. Bloody hilarious. Could be something in there, you know. Pipe, pipe, fish. Right, so yeah, it's coming up to the middle of the day now, which is generally not a very good time for pike at all. Um, so I'm getting bored. <laughs> I'm thinking about different rigs I can use. So this is the first one I've come up with. This is a double anchovy, um, cable tied to either side of the wire trays, um, with a treble in either end. That's going to go. These anchovies are they're quite soft, you know. They're quite small and they're quite soft. So I think that's the best way to do it. It looks a bit like a sea bait, doesn't it? Got to be worth a go, innit? Boat just went. Yeah, see that? That was right near the reeds. It's just pulled out on a single anchovy. Oh, is it going to happen? My heart is racing. All right, let's get the camera down. Oh, my first in the camera. I think it's still going. I think he's got it. I 
I've gone over, the battery's going to die as well. Such a small bait. Yeah, he's on there. Right. This is going to be a bit of a drama to get in, I think. Ah, oh. oh, come on! Oh no, he's dropped it! Absolutely destroyed. Um, I really didn't think it was going to happen, to tell the truth, but it's completely my fault. It's, um, it's 12 o'clock, it's midday, it's lunchtime, it's not really um, not really the best bite time, but um, I was just mucking around with the rigs, um, and I put it, I thought, oh, do you know what, I'm going to put a little anchovy on the float rod. I've changed uh, the ledger setup, and I thought, oh, do you know what, no harm in it, chucking it out there. It's been out there 15 minutes, and then all of a sudden, boop, 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 and pulled across and stopped. Stopped, it didn't move at all. And I thought, that's just just a, just a bit too much to be wind. Um, then two ducks came along, I don't know if you see it on the footage, two ducks came along, pecked at the float, and the float moved off from the top ducks. So I'm like, right, I've got, it's only a tiny little anchovy, like two inches or so. So I'm like, all right, got it here. Here, had it on, got it straight into the, straight into the edge. I, I basically, I, I had it, really. Um, and then, because when I moved around it, I tied my net up, didn't I? Like, like you would do, I tied, tied it up just so the net's not all hanging everywhere when I'm um, walking around. And I couldn't shake it free. I really couldn't. And then I've got, I've got the pike like a foot away from the end of the net. I'm trying to get it underneath it and the net's just not scooping it up. So I've had to pull the net back, um, pull the net back to my hand. I've released the pressure for like literally a couple of seconds when as I'm, as I'm get, getting, the, getting the knot undone with my hand. Um, and then as I've gone to tighten back up, it's just literally the hooks are pulled out of its mouth. But um, well, that's the thing about using barbless hooks, but you've got to use barbless hooks. Uh, it's completely my fault. If I had, had the net ready, um, I'd have landed it. So it's, I'm not going to blame it on the barbless hooks. I'm going to blame it on me not thinking I was going to get a bite and got a bite. Um, so... On to other matters is I've, I've changed my ledger rig um, because of because of the weed in it. I, I think that basically having it uh, having the lead running free, running on the line, going to the hook length like you normally would do, it's just it's just pulling it all down and basically it's, it'll be ending up end up being snakes. So I've changed it to similar like it's like a helicopter setup for cops. So you've got. I've had to put an up trace on because of this. It's, uh, I think it's 50 pound lead core lead. I've taken the lead out um, and I've used that for weight in my pop up. So the the swivel of the trace is running up and down on about four foot of lead core leader. Um, I've put a small bit of uh, balsa wood on onto the swivel, and what that will do is it will help um, kick it back up the the up trace when it hits the water. And then it will settle back down on top of the weed and the hooking arrangement i've changed as well um i'm really gonna have to put an anchovy on now but um i'm gonna give this a go for half an hour um yes yeah, so i've got a little bit of my uh trevelli a little bit of foam and it's hair rigged onto a treble 
um, and the treble's on a loop on the wire and that's got some lead wire wrapped around so that's I've tested it in the edge and that sits like like that so that's proper proper properly critically balanced and popped up um, so th this rod's going to go long but it's going to go close in now and the other thing that is really interesting the spot that I got that um, the tape from the pike from on the anchovy was exactly where I put out all that bit the, um, the munger this morning all of the chum so he must the chum must have attracted him in there he must have been feed I've had I've had a big bait out there for an hour or so and nothing put a small little anchovy on and within 15 minutes I've got a bite. So maybe it's a thing. Maybe he's been in there feeling, feeling on them bits of chopped anchovy, chopped, uh, what else have I got in there? Blueies, chopped trevelli, um, and then he's hoovered it up. So yeah, well, well, so a couple more spums out there, a couple more spums of mix. I'm gonna put this probably 30 yards to the left, but um, in line with the, the marginal reed um, and this is going to get a couple of spums of mix on the top and I'm hyped man I'm hyped I was just about I was about to have lunch I was about to have a little kip um, and wait for the light wait for the light to go down and this evening to come and where it's generally generally going to be better pie time but it's happened um, even though I lost it I'm, I'm hyped I'm hyped I had, had a bite had a bite um, yeah let's get this one out and then um, tidy up the swim because it's a bum shell and have a bit of lunch. Big to the treat. So, right then, um, I broke my own rule, didn't I? Uh, after losing that fish about midday, I spent another three hours in that swim um, to no avail at all. There wasn't another another single bite coming from it. Um, in hindsight, I should have given it another 30 minutes, see if that fish came back for another bite, and then, um, yeah, they then moved and then maybe gone back there again. But yeah, three hours I spent in that bloody swim, and, and nothing so I got I got pissed off with that and I've come down to the bottom lake for for the last couple of hours of light um, I've got about half pint of maggots left I put a bit of the, the fine powder fitting in for me and I've been spotting that out and the, the, the seagulls have been going mental so I think the maggots are floating basically um, which is I don't know if it's a bad thing I don't think the seagulls are going to scare off the pike at all I think if anything it might might make them think oh what's going on there's something happening there and come and have a look but it's a, a last ditch effort to to try and try and instigate something because um, I'm on a blank, you know. <laughs> even though I've learned a little bit, um, I'm still on a blank, and no one likes a blank. So yeah, unless um, unless I catch anything, this has been London City Angler. Later. Hey. No.